Hello! Good morning, everyone! Welcome to another exciting episode of English 9 Valenzuela Live. This is the second episode of our series of learning about the topic, Conditionals. This morning, we target to hit the most essential learning competency, use conditionals in expressing arguments. With a subskill, agree or disagree with the ideas presented in the material viewed appropriately. After this module, you are expected to express agreement or disagreement in the materials viewed using conditional statements, identify conditionals and its types, and construct conditional sentences using the correct tenses of the verb. And we will be using Quarter 1, Module 7, entitled Conditionals in Expressing Arguments, written by Ma Maria Carmela Di Fajardo of Mapulang Lupa National High School. Are you ready? Let us start! Last episode, we tackled about the formats and parts of a conditional sentence. Also, we discussed the first among the four types of conditional sentences, which is the zero conditionals. For today, we will learn the rest of the types. To start with, let us define the word superstitions. When we say superstitions, these are beliefs or notions that are not based on reason or knowledge. Like any other countries, we Filipinos, we have our very original superstitious beliefs which we actually inherited from our ancestors. There are perhaps hundreds or maybe thousands of these beliefs out there. Can you share us any superstitions that you know or you hear from your parents, grandparents, teachers, or even friends? You may share your answers in our comment section. And these are some examples. First, if you go straight home after attending a wake, the deceased will follow you home. If you and your sibling marry in the same year, you will experience bad luck. If the birthday celebrant serves noodles on his birthday, he will get longer life. If you sleep with wet hair, you will go crazy. If someone leaves the table while you are still eating, you will remain unmarried. And if you drop a utensil, a visitor will come. These are only some of those thousands of superstitions that our culture has, and I believe you still know a lot of them. I am not telling you to follow all these, yet we cannot deny the fact that even though we live in this modern day, we still tend to adhere to these beliefs. Now this time, let us focus on the sentence structures. What do you notice in our example sentences? It is right. All these sentences start with the word if. Also, these sentences are composed of two clauses. Hmm, looks and sounds familiar, huh? And yes, these are examples of conditional sentences. Let us take a closer look at the tenses of the verbs used. If you remember, the zero conditionals use simple present tense of the verb in the if clause and the main clause. In these sentences, what verbs did we use? If you go straight home after attending a wake is our if clause. That shows the condition. The deceased will follow you home is our main clause and that shows the result. Go in the if clause is simple present. And will follow in the main clause is simple future. Therefore, type 1 conditionals are formed by using a simple present tense of the verb in the if clause and simple future in the main clause. Let us look at another example. If you and your sibling marry in the same year, you will experience bad luck. Marry in the if clause is simple present. And will experience in the main clause is simple future. Again, to form a type 1 conditional sentences, you must use simple present in the if clause and simple future in the main clause. Now that you already know how to form it, when do we use the first conditional sentence? Let us have these examples. 
if I win the lottery, I will buy a car. Here, I am talking about the future. I am thinking about a particular condition or situation in the future and the result of this condition. There is a real possibility that this condition will happen. Another example. It is early in the morning, you are at home, and you plan to go for an outdoor exercise this afternoon. Let's say you want to go for a walk, but there are some dark clouds in the sky. Imagine that it rains. What will you do? You can say, if it rains, I will stay at home. Notice that we are thinking about the future condition. It is not raining yet, but, a, but the sky is cloudy and you think it could rain. So, we use the simple present tense to talk about a possible future condition and we use will plus base verb to talk about future result. The important thing about a first conditional is that there is a real possibility that the condition will happen. Here are some more examples. If you walk this way, I will show you the room. Take note of the verbs used in each clause. The possible condition in simple present form, walk, and the future result will show. Another example. If you set your goals, you will achieve it. Set is simple present and will achieve is simple future. If you are free tomorrow, I will invite you to a gathering. Is is simple present and will invite is simple future. The first conditional is also used in making predictions. When we say prediction, it is a statement you make about what you think will happen in the future. You can use the first conditional sentence to say what you think will happen in a specific situation or when a specific event happens. Here are some examples. If you stay out in the rain too long, you will be sick. And if you don't hurry, you will be late. Also, the first conditionals are used to express superstitions, just like our examples in the first part of this lesson. Here are more examples. If you look at the mirror at 3 in the morning, you will see your future husband or wife. And if you buy a needle in the middle of the night, you will have bad luck. Another use of conditionals is to express future plans. You can use the first conditional sentence structure to make plans for the future. If an event or a situation happens first, here are some examples. If you plan to attend a wedding, I will go with you. And if I see Lawrence later today, I will remind him about the event. Lastly, First conditionals are also used in giving warnings or threats. A warning is a statement about a possible problem or danger. And a threat is a statement that someone will harm you or cause you trouble if you do not do what they ask you to do. Here are some examples. If the policeman catches you speeding, you will get a ticket. And if you don't give me what I want, I will never speak to you again. So, remember, in the first conditionals, we use the simple present tense in the if clause and simple future in the main clause. Moreover, first conditionals are used to talk about actions or events in the future which are likely to happen or have a real possibility of happening. We also use it for predictions, superstitions, future plans, and in giving warnings and threats. Now, let's proceed to the second conditional sentences. To start with, I have a question for you. What would you do if you won the lottery? Yeah, you won the lottery. If you are going to ask me if I won the lottery, I would travel to South Korea. How about you? I'm sure you have so many things you would like to do, so many places that you would want to travel, and so many things that you would love to buy. Winning a lottery is such a happy thought, isn't it? Everyone wants to win a lottery, but how would you win a lottery if you did not bet at all? It's impossible, right? For today, we will talk about the type 2 conditional sentence or the second conditional. 
The second conditional is just like the first conditional. We are still thinking about the future. We are still thinking about a particular condition in the future and its possible result. However, there is no real possibility that this condition will happen. For example, you do not have a lottery ticket. Is it possible for you to win? Of course not. If you don't have a ticket, you will not win. But maybe you are thinking about buying a ticket in the future and right now you are also thinking about the possibility of winning that lottery. So right now, it is not that real. It is just like a dream, but it is possible. To talk about this further, here is another example. If I won the lottery, I would travel to South Korea. Notice that we are thinking about a future condition. We use the simple past tense to talk about a future condition, and we use would plus base form of the verb to talk about the future result. The important thing about the second conditional is that there is an unreal possibility that the condition will happen. Let us compare the first and the second conditionals. In the first conditionals, we use it when there is a real possibility that the condition will happen, and we use simple present tense in the if clause and simple feature in the main clause. That's will plus base verb. By the way, when we say base form of the verb, this is the simplest form of the verb without endings. No S, no ING, no D, or no ED. This is the usual form of the verb that we see in dictionaries. While in the second conditionals, we use it, we use it when talking about impossible, imaginary, or unlikely situations. For example, if I were an animal, I would be a tiger. That's impossible. You can't be an animal. Next, what would you do if you were a fairy? That is an imaginary question because we are not even sure if fairies do really exist. And if they ate less fast food, they would be healthier. That is unlikely to happen. Let's say they are really busy. They have a busy life. Take a closer look at these examples. We form the second conditionals by using the simple past tense of the verb in the if clause and would plus base form of the verb in the main clause. If I had enough money, I would build a mansion with 10 bedrooms and 5 swimming pools. Wow. This is another example of a conditional sentence, a second conditional sentence. Why? Because I'm probably not going to have this much money. This is just a dream and it, it is not real. As you can see, we use the simple past tense had in the if clause and would by would plus base verb in the main clause. Now, let us compare it to another sentence. If I have enough money, I will buy some new shoes. This is in the first conditional because it is much possible to happen. It is more likely that I will have enough money to buy some pair of shoes. In terms of structure, we use the simple present verb, have, in the if clause and will plus base, will buy, in the main clause. Here's the next example. If I were an animal, I would be a tiger. As you can see, we use had in the if clause, which is in simple past tense, and would be, be is the base form of the verb in the main clause. Take note. We use were instead of was even though I is singular because the sentence is in the subjunctive mood. A subjunctive mood pertains to a hypothetical situation. Also, sometimes we use should, could, or might instead of would, for example. If I won a million dollars, I could stop working. We can also use the second conditional to give advice, especially if you want to be polite professional or sound more formal. Here are some examples. If I were you, I would save for my family's future. And if I were you, I would tell him my feelings. Again, the second conditional is used to talk about unreal situations in the present or things that are impossible and won't happen. We use the simple past and the if clause and would plus base form of the verb in the main clause. Now, 
it's time to talk about the third conditionals. Let us start discussing it with this question. What is the best advice that your family had given you? I'm sure that your family, especially your parents, have given you some reminders every now and then, am I right? And perhaps you have heard nuggets of advice from them which made an impression on you. If you want to share your answers, you may put them in our comment section below. Meanwhile, let us take a look at the following sentences. If you had stopped playing online games, you would have finished the activities in your learning packets. Another, if you hadn't eaten so much, you wouldn't have been sick. Now, what do you notice about these sentences? Yes, all these sentences start with the word if, and all these sentences are composed of two clauses, the if clause and the main clause. And yes, you are right. All of them are still conditional sentences, and this is what we call the type 3 conditional sentence or the third conditional. The question is, what makes it different from the other types of conditionals that we have already discussed? Remember that the first and the second conditionals talk about the future. With the third conditional, we talk about the past. We talk about a condition in the past that did not happen. That is why there is no possibility for this condition to happen. The third conditional is also like a dream but with no possibility of becoming true. Let's take a look at this sentence. Let's say, last week, you bought a lottery ticket, but you did not win. You can say, if I had won the lottery, I would have bought a car. How do we form the third conditionals? The if clause that shows conditions should use the past perfect tense. What do we mean by past perfect? Past perfect talks about actions that were completed in the past, and we form the past perfect by using had, plus the past participle of the verb. On the other hand, in the main clause that shows result, we use would have plus the past participle of the verb. Let us go back to our first example. If I had won the lottery, I would have bought a car. Notice that this sentence talks about an impossible past condition. You did not win the lottery. It means that the action was already completed in the past. We use the past perfect tense to talk about the impossible past condition. We use would have plus the past participle to talk about the impossible past result. So, the important thing about the third conditional is that the condition and the result are both impossible to happen. When we are talking about something in the past which cannot be altered now, we use past perfect in the if clause and would have plus past participle in the main clause. For example, if you had studied your lessons, you would have passed the exam. In this example, we cannot alter or change the past. You did not study your lessons, so you failed the test. Here are more examples. If you had told me you needed money, I would have lent you some. Another, I would have come to the meeting if you had reminded me about it. And, if I had seen you, I would have said hello. As you can see, all the verbs used in the if clauses are in past perfect tense, had plus the past participle, and the verbs in the main clauses used would have plus the past participle of the verbs. Sometimes, we use could have, should have, or might have instead of would have. For example, if you had bought a lottery ticket, you might have won. Another use of type 3 conditional is when we express regrets or we wish to change the past. I have never met someone who is perfectly happy with this every single action, have you? Sometimes we regret the past, past decisions, past actions, and past situations. And sometimes we wish something in the past had been different, but it isn't different. It can't be different. It's impossible. Yes, that is the key word. But... We still wish for it. Here are some examples. If I had gone to a better university, I would have had better career opportunities. Another, if I hadn't lost my wallet, I would have had much more fun on my vacation. 
and if you hadn't come into my life, I could have been happier. We are just done discussing the basic structures of conditional sentences and the different types of conditionals. At this point, we will dive into using conditionals in expressing arguments. So, we'll talk about conditionals and arguments. Let us have a brief restatement. A conditional sentence expresses one situation as a condition for the occurrence of another situation or the result. That is why a conditional sentence is divided into two parts the if clause or the condition, and the main clause, which is the result. We have to bear in mind that conditional sentences can be classified according to their uses. We had a zero, first, second, and the third se uh, conditional sentences. Aside from those categories, another common way of classifying a conditional sentence is to label them as indicative and subjunctive conditionals. Indicative conditionals refer to situations that have a realistic chance of happening, as in, if I pass this course, I will graduate on time. So, this statement is likely to happen that if I pass this subject or course, I will graduate on time. However, when we say subjunctive conditionals, they describe purely hypothetical situations that can't happen or are very improbable to happen, as in, if I were you, I would sell all the goods. So this sentence is classified as subjunctive because I could never be you. That is the difference between the indicative and the subjunctive conditionals. Now, in this part of our discussion, we will focus on the indicative conditionals. Indicative conditionals are sentences in the form of the condition followed by the result. They are everywhere, from everyday conversations to political debates or even in scientific discourse. For instance, if we keep emitting greenhouse gases at our current pace, the oceans will rise and many cities will be flooded. Which do you think is the antecedent and the consequence in our example? That's right. The if clause or the condition is our antecedent. And the main clause or the result is our consequent. The condition described in the antecedent is believed to be sufficient under circumstance described in the consequent. To say that it is sufficient, meaning it is enough. We don't need anything more to prove the result. Like arguments, conditionals may express inferences. What do we mean by inferences? These are conclusions that we make on the basis of evidences and reasonings. Nevertheless, a condition by itself is not an argument. The difference is that when you put an argument, you commit yourself to the truthfulness of all its parts, even if we say that it is only for the sake of the argument. So, when we use a conditional, however, I do not commit the truth of either its the antecedent or the consequent. For example, if Mary is elected, then I will eat my hat. So someone who asserts a conditional like this one is convinced that neither the antecedent nor the consequent is true. He is simply betting against the person. He just doesn't want Mary to win the election, but he won't definitely eat the hat if Mary is elected. I'm sure you have heard a lot of this before, especially among politicians. Conditionals, however, can figure as parts of arguments, as premises, conclusions, or both. Let's take a look at these examples. If you study, then you'll pass. If you pass, then you'll graduate. Therefore, if you study, then you'll graduate. As you can see here, we have three conditional sentences. The first two are the premises and the last one is the conclusion. The consequent in the first sentence was transferred into the second sentence and was used as the antecedent. Then, in the conclusion, we use the antecedent from the first sentence and the consequent from the second sentence. Here is another example. If I sleep late, I feel ill. If I feel ill, then I can't work well. Hence, if I sleep late, then I can't work well. So it's the same thing. 
The first two sentences are the premises and the last one is the conclusion. And we also did the same thing. The consequent in the first sentence was transferred into the second sentence and was used as the antecedent. Then, in the conclusion, we use the antecedent from the first sentence and the, con and the consequent from the second sentence. Take note of this. In general, an argument is valid if and only if its cor corresponding conditional is necessarily true. And that is how we use conditional sentences in arguments. Now, let me show you English songs that have conditionals in their lyrics. Your job is to take all those lines that express conditionals and identify its type. I suggest you get a pen and a paper for taking down your answers. Are you ready? Here it is. Never would have hitchhiked to Birmingham if it hadn't been for love. Never would have called the train to Louisiana if it hadn't been for love. Never would have run for Conditionals. We only have one, and that is, if this is my last night with you, you better hold me like I'm more than just a friend. For the first conditionals, we have two. One, baby, if you say you want me to stay, I'll change my mind. And two, I don't know, I don't want to know I'm walking away if you'll be mine. For the second conditional, we have number one, if only I knew what I want today, I would hold you in my arms. Number two, if I had just one more day, I would tell you how much that I've missed you since you've been away. And number three, if you gave me a chance, I would take it. And for the third conditionals, we have one. Never would have hitched hike to Bir Bir Birmingham if it hadn't been for love. And never would have got a train to Louisiana if it hadn't been for love. Were you able to get them all correctly? Great, I know you can. To sum up, there are four types of conditional sentences. Zero conditional, first conditional, second conditional, and the third conditional. We use the zero conditionals to express situations that are always true or possible. Zero conditionals do not have maybes and possibilities in them. Take note on the use of the simple present tense of verbs in both classes. Next. We use the first conditionals to express situations that are possible or realistic with the use of simple present tense of verb in the if clause and will plus base form of the verb in the main clause. After that, we use the second conditionals to express situations that are highly impossible and are unlikely to happen. We use the simple past tense of verb in the if clause and would plus base form of the verb in the main clause. 
Finally, we use the third conditionals to express situations in the past that are different from reality with the use of past perfect tense of the verb in the if clause and would have plus past participle form of the verb in the main clause. In addition, we can also use the conditionals in expressing your stand or your arguments about a certain issue. Now, we've come to the Q&A part. Like what you always do, you may type in your questions at the comment box below and you will be given a minute to ask your queries. And our moderator will collate all your questions and will choose uh, three of them to be addressed here live. And the rest of the questions will be sent to your class discussion teachers. And they'll be the ones to answer them. And your one minute starts now. I hope you are able to send your questions. The first one, the first question is from Vicente Trinidad National High School. And the question is, what are some instances that we need to use a conditional statement as we speak? Great question. Like what I told you during the previous session, we build our confidence on using English grammar to speak and write. The point here is not simply to memorize grammar, but actually to be able to use it in everyday conversations. In your question, we will go back to the functions of conditional sentences. Again, we use conditionals to talk about imaginary situations in the past, present, and future. Next, we use them for situations that might happen in the future or situations that might never happen. Also, we use conditionals for actions in the past that cannot be changed. And we can also use them in expressing our arguments and giving our stand. The next question is from a student from my San National High School. How can I easily understand and master the forms and functions of conditional sentences? Learning one, uh, learning one of the trickiest grammar lessons in English is quite challenging, but there are always hundreds of ways on how you can make it easier for you to remember and retain them in your minds. Although it does sound difficult, and even though it does require a lot of work, time, and dedication, there are some small tips that I can give you in order to master conditionals more quickly. Tip one, know its use. We use conditionals to express a certain condition and the result of that condition. That's the basis of it. Then, depending on the type of conditional we choose to use, we can express great things, be it about the future or the past. Tip two, know the structure. In order to understand why we use conditionals better, you need to be familiar with the basic structure of every conditional sentence. So, we have an if plus, which is used to describe the condition, and we have the main clause, which states what will happen if the condition is met. And tip three, know the verb tenses. In order to understand conditionals, I mean, to really, really understand how to use them, you need to learn them and learn them well. You need to learn how to form them, which tenses to use for which conditionals, and then try to use them as much as you can. I think that's it. I hope you will use what you have just learned this day as you continue your journey in learning the English language. Now it is time to check your learning packets. You will see what's more 
with the reading selection if written by Rudyard Kipling. In activity one, there is a comprehension check where you will answer questions about a poem. What I can do is the next task where you will write an open letter using conditionals and in the assessment part, you will complete the given sentences by supplying the correct conditional verbs. Before we end, I would like to thank our technical support teacher and our teacher moderator for their contribution in making these learning engagements successful. This has been Teacher Wen, and see you again next time for another episode of Virtual English Class, only here at Valenzuela Live, where distance is never a hindrance in learning. Stay home, stay safe, and keep on learning. Bye!